I'm Matt Lingo. I'm Terry Taffy. So you guys own Country Club. Yes. How did you did you how did that come about? Both of you owning them? Uh, I acquired I call him Dink. I acquired him as a pup from Dave McGinnis. Uh, I just bought him. Actually, I don't even know what the deal was, but uh, I just went out on a whim and it was the first blue tick I ever got, and it's just kind of never looked back. Was he a puppy when you got him? He was uh, right about eight weeks old, I believe, when Dave delivered him. Uh, he drove from New York within 30 minutes of my house. I met him on the side of the road. And then when did you become partners? Uh, I think Dink was a year, year and a half old. Yeah. Uh, and the, you know, I raised him and started him, and which my wife and kids had a big part of that, just raising him up. He started early. Uh, I think I put him in his first hunt when he was like nine months old. Um, and we just kind of took off and it was maybe five months after that first hunt Matt reached out and said hey uh, you going to blue tick days this year I said no he goes well that dog probably ought to go would you like me to take him or could I take him and I said take him and I've never got the dog back <laughs> so. so he stays with Matt yeah time. So uh, I took him blue tick days that year, and I never won King of Hunted blue tick days. Always wanted to win it. And uh, we went out there and hunted him, and they had a young guns hunt Thursday night. And we didn't win. He didn't look very good. But I'd hunted him all week, and I told my wife, I get home, I said, man, this dog is nice. Like, I love him. Um, we ended up winning our cast Friday night, and it went our cast Saturday night. And we got King of Hunted blue tick days. And came home and told my wife, I said, I don't know what it's going to take to buy that dog, but I'd like to own him. Um, and I know Terry had some offers for him. I know it was probably more than what I offered him. Um, but I reached out and asked him if he'd take this much for half, and he said, let me think about it. He called me the next day and I said, yeah, we'll do that. The rest is history, I guess. It's history. There are a lot of people that are partners with dogs, and you've, I don't know if you've heard, but I've heard some people have issues, or whether it be handling stud fees, or who's getting a stud fee pot, or who's taking them on, stuff like that. Do you have any advice for people who might be partnering with a dog in the future? My advice would be uh, let one guy be in charge of that aspect of the dog. And in this case, it's this guy right here. Yeah. I've, I've been reached out and people called, and that's the first thing I tell them, get a hold of Matt, because uh, as far as the stud the stud dog goes, I'm really not in that business. If I breed a dog, then I'm really breeding a dog for myself. Mm -hmm. I'm more of the, I like the puppy stages. And not everybody's like that. So this, as far as telling, it's the first partnership I've ever had on a dog. And um, that would probably be the only partnership I'd want to want to stay with. I think the important thing is we kind of set the ground rule at the start. When when I made Terry that offer, I told him, I said, look, we're good friends. We're always going to be good friends. And if, if there's something wrong or you're not happy or I'm not happy, then you can just have the dog back and we're going to be friends. No matter what happens here, yeah. <laughs> you and I are going to be friends. And so um, I, it, it's been a great partnership. I don't partner with many people. I'm pretty selective who I do, um, but um, Terry's been a great one for sure. So you've known each other for a while then? Uh, yeah, I've, I've known Matt probably since, probably 25 years I've known him. That, that helps a lot, oh, yeah. I'm sure. He yeah. has a lot of experience yep. with one another. And I've drawled him out in hunts around home for years, yeah. and he's always picked on me about hunting blue <laughs> tick. <laughs> And, you know, Terry and I competed against each other for a lot of years, but um, I'd go out there and hunt and I'd have trouble with the dog. I said, Terry, man, I don't, this dog's just, just doing this, you know. What do you think? He'd give me some advice and I'd go do it, and I'd be like, hang on. <laughs> Terry actually knows what he's talking about. Don't tell everybody that. <laughs> so you said that he'd give you 
trouble or give you crap about hunting blue ticks. What did you hunt before? Uh, walker dogs, mostly. I started out um, as a young kid, probably 10 years old, but my neighbor had a pair of red bones and uh, I caught the bug and I think I got my first dog when I was about 14. It was an English red tick. And had I known then what I know now about dogs, I might be hunting English dogs now. But, you know, I ruined quite a few dogs just trying to figure out how to get one started. Learning. And, uh, you know, it's still pretty easy to do. But with a good program and uh, a good team, it takes a good team to, to make a, a good bunch of dogs or just a couple good dogs, you know. And not every night are they perfect, but it, I think at the end of the day, you know, if we're happy with what we got, that that makes a partnership, uh, you know, worth more than anything. So yeah, have you always hunted blue ticks? Though? Always hunted blue ticks. Yep. So I started hunting when I was five years old with my dad. Um, he had blue dogs, and that's that's all I've ever ever hunted in my entire life. So. Did your family get you into hunting them too? Uh, well, I kind of, sort of. Um, by the time I was really getting into it, like I said, I had a neighbor friend that, that my dad would hunt with a little bit. Um, but my dad was tired of chasing dogs. Back then, these dogs didn't tree and stay treed like they do now, unless you had three or four of them, you yeah. know, in there. So the dogs have come a long way through the breeding, and some good, some not so good. But, uh... You know, I can remember always making fun of the blue tick guys, and, <laughs> and I'd always make fun of Matt and his dad, and, you know, I drew his dad out a lot back in the day, and, but I can remember a couple dogs that they had that really impressed me back then. Um, if they was a little better handlers, they might have <laughs> no done a little better, but, uh, you know, it's all a all learning curve. I find interesting in you saying that is a lot of the people I talk to, there's hardly any of them have been hunting a specific breed and stuck with it their whole life. They, I, I don't know why, but it seems like they'll start with one and they'll get like a once in a lifetime dog. And that kind of changes their perspective. And that's why I go with so many different breeds of people because I don't care. I like all coon hounds, I like the way they look. Right. So if it if you turn it loose and it goes and trees a coon, that's what matters to me more than anything. Absolutely, I'm care. not. You know, if I had a good opportunity for a nice walker pup, you know, I might jump on that and, and take my chance. I, I like a good coon dog. I don't really, yeah. I don't have a preference. I'm kind of partial to these uh, light colored blue dogs. That, yeah. Um, but I've had a lot of luck with them and they are they seem to like to please you. And uh, like anybody else's, when, they, when you show up, you really don't know what you're turning loose that night until the night's over with. How, how do you like to start pups? Um, really, uh, probably I've learned more from Terry on starting pups than anybody. Um, I've watched him since we've been partners. It seems like he always comes up with a nice pup. And so I got to thinking about it. He lets his pups run loose around the house. And if you sit there and think about that, the only time my pups were getting hunted is when I got them out of the kennel and took them mm -hmm. hunting. Whereas if you let them pups run loose, they're run hunting 24 hours a day, seven days a week, and they're learning. Um, and so what I really like to do now, uh, after watching him do it, is I let these pups run loose, and once they start getting into stuff, and the neighbor's got to bring them home, or uh, it's probably time to put them up. But, um, and then once I put them up, you know, I, I'll take them for walks through the woods, or We'll trap some coon, maybe turn one loose for them, that type of thing, and then just from there, just take them hunting. So, do you have anything to add to that, then? No, he's doing a good job. We, uh, oh, you're the puppy man. <laughs> we've had some pretty good success with breeding dogs to dink, and you know, just the pups that we've kept. We, we've had some pretty decent ones. Yeah. Um, and I can't hunt them all. He can't hunt them all. We both have families, and we have other obligations, so. Usually, I think the best thing to do with a good started pup once it gets to a certain point is just to move it down the road and hope it gets in the right hands. Yeah. And we've had a couple, yeah. a couple of them do that. That are, uh, you know, guys are going to start hearing of them. I think. Yeah. We had a club meeting up there at our club last Tuesday, 
and there was three guys at that club meeting, and they all went hunting together. They was all hunting pups off the off the dink, so yeah. which is pretty cool. It's pretty neat to see. Yeah. Some one of them guys was a Walker man too. So, <laughs> well, that's another thing. If you go hunting with them, you might have a bias towards a certain dog or a certain breed, but you go hunting with them, and yeah. you hear them open up and tree, and but yeah. you go hunt with the right dog, it can make you change your preferences a lot and what you absolutely. As far as the breeding and the, you know, with the blue dog, I still, to this day, I don't, people ask me, hey, what's that dog get out of and go back to? I don't know. I don't, I don't try to keep track of bloodlines much and what breeding is doing what. Like I said before, if it's a, if it's a nice dog, I don't care what it's out of. Um, and I think a lot of people nowadays are doing that. It's with the crossbreed, you know, it's shooting up. Yeah. People are finding out that uh, too much line breeding all these years, and we got a lot of bad traits, which are good traits, but you know, too much of it can go the opposite direction. Yeah. Just like anything, too much of something is not good. Right. So if you're doing line breeding, can be good, but if you do it for forty or fifty years, then yeah, you could be missing out on something. Yeah. So, do you know how he's bred? So he's off of uh, Big Country on the top side, and then off of uh, the name Fancy. Is that yeah. the female that Dave had. And Fancy goes back. There's uh, Tim's Iron Wheel dogs back in there, and Bishop's Blue Grover. Um, I hunted with that Grover dog, um, and John Bishop. And John Bishop. The thing I like about him is. That dog was the one that won those hunts. It wasn't John. Yeah. Was John's super honest, super nice guy. And when you hunt with a dog that's really nice and you've done some winning like he did, that, that pretty impressive to me. So um, yeah, so yeah, that's that's kind of how he bred. Have you noticed any females or any bloodlines that might have a lot of success crossing with them? You know, I think just about every female we've crossed on him has turned out pretty decent hounds for the most part. Um, I think um, there was a, a Smoky River bred female that Mark Brady had. Yeah. There was there was several in that litter that were really nice. Was um, her name Green? Yeah. Was that kind of the for yeah. a couple months? Yeah. Yeah. Nice um, those, those, that was a nice cross. And then uh, I got a six month old pup now off of a, a female that I started. Um, she was off of Pison and Apple's honeybee female. Um, Jake and Joel Apple and the, the honeybee female, Mike Shepard and Pison. Um, I had her, she got a little track happy on me, I sold her, bought her back, because I, I knew they started early. That, that Sadie female, when I cut her loose for the first time in the woods, she treated the very first tree she went to. And I thought, you know, I'd like to get some of that early start stuff in there. And so I'm, I bought her back and made that cross, and. I got a six month old pup here out of that cross that, that's running the tree and I, I can't let him loose around here. He's gonna <laughs> yeah. get treed somewhere. So yeah. um, I think that cross is gonna be really nice. I don't know of any crosses that really stick out because I feel like the ones that, um, and I haven't had a pup out of all these litters that we've had, which hadn't really been too many, but the few that I've kept around and, and started, all started young and they all maybe have a little different trait than what Dink would have, and I didn't really know much about the female, but, you know, I think they've all gonna, they're gonna turn into good dogs, and they're, they're all young yet. Yeah. I, just, I like asking that question of people, because then 20 years from now, someone can go back, and if someone noticed that this line of dogs is reproducing better, that might help someone yeah. 20 years down the yeah, road. Yeah, absolutely. So I just... It's interesting to see, but most people I hunt with have really well-known top stud dogs that are reproducing, so yeah. it's pretty common that most of the pups turn out pretty good. Because yeah. if you have a good female, you're going to go to a good male, and anytime yeah. you get quality of quality, it's got a yeah. pretty good chance to make something. Right. So do you have anything to add before we go on? We'll talk about his... I want to save something for when we're out there. Mm -hmm. We'll talk about the competition hunting and that side of it once you get the boards i don't think so i just uh you know i enjoy the time i spend out in the woods with dogs that that want to please and i think that's what we have 
uh, sometimes, you know, we just like everybody else, they can get you aggravated and um, maybe 30 minutes into your hunt, you know, you're right back to where you was and everybody's on the same page again. Yeah. I think one thing to add, you know, it takes a lot of people to make all this happen. You know, Terry and I kind of get a lot of the, the, I guess, notoriety, if you want to call it that. But, you know, we got a really good team of people that Absolutely. work with us. Um, you know, Derek Bryan, Sam Jones, uh, Randy, uh, Ryan Davidson, and Roger Beesman helped me get Nick ready for Autumn Oaks this year. Mm -hmm. And then, you know, our families, you know, they sacrifice a lot for us to go out here and do, the, do yeah. what we love to do. And so um, it, it's a really neat team that we have. We have a lot of fun at the same time. And one thing you mentioned that you said your wife and kids help around the house a lot too. Yeah. That's a lot of people that start their own pups. They'll let their wife and kids handle them. Oh, yeah. And I've Absolutely. noticed if you just do that socializing with them, yeah. that makes all the difference in the world. Because like you said, they want to please you. Right? Yeah, absolutely. Because they have some sort of connection with yeah. you. Yeah. He's the best thing that happened to these pups we got. He <laughs> yeah. just goes out there and messes with them, plays with them. So. All right. Well, that would be good. We can go. Get dark now and go to the woods. Okay, let's do it. on him to get struck in you want to tell me a little bit about how he's done competition wise uh we've had a lot of a lot of success in competition hunts with him uh placed 18th in the world been in the grand 16 three times um as a four-year-old that's pretty impressive the fourth year he won his cast wasn't enough to get in uh was printing nationals blue tick breed winner what else, Terry? Wade won the youth nationals with him. Youth nationals. Your boy. You won third in Indiana State, huh? Wasn't you, Drew? Mm -hmm. uh, placed third in Super Stakes as a sophomore. Uh, won Blue Tick Days, was king of hunt there. I don't know. What am I missing? I don't know. It seems like the dog always gives you a chance and puts you in the winner's circle wherever you go. So, yeah. That's the one. Is it treed? Ah, uh, so this bloody nose is done. You got a bloody nose again? Little one. Well, let's go see if he's got anything. No. Oh, 
Females bred to him right now of your own or anyone you know? Nothing bred right now. Um, the last litter I had was out of that uh, that Sadie female. Um, they're six months old. Um, I got a female at the house right now that's off of my old Rush dog. Um, who's um, heavy Razor Ridge bred. Uh, Daniel Smith and Amy Thomas uh, kind of had that line of dogs. And, Hunted some of their dogs for a lot of years and um, ended up with Rush. Um, kind of like to have a, a pup out off a female off the of Rush and, and Dink um, for my own personal benefit, if nothing else. So, but nothing, nothing bred to him right now. Oh, <laughs> 
job. Oh. Oh. There's three of them right up there. <laughs> Rounded them all up. Treat some more coon, we're gonna head back to the truck now and make a few more drops. You gotta have at least one. Yeah, why not? Mm-hmm. 
Oh, 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 oh,